Hello and welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV with me, your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we're going to be talking all about the 6mm ARC, or Advanced Rifle Cartridge. It was developed by Hornady per special request of a well-known DOD entity. And what they were looking for is something that shoots flatter and hits harder than 5.56 NATO. And what Hornady came up with is pretty interesting. This 6mm ARC, for short. And when it comes to this cartridge, <clears throat> it is pretty impressive, but for us hand loaders, it's really nothing new. It looks very, very similar to a 6mm Grendel or a 6mm PPC. There are some notable tweaks to the cartridge that should be pointed out, such as the shoulder has been set forward a little bit there to increase your powder capacity, and there's a few other little things, but all in all, it should be pretty familiar to us hand loaders. Also, it is a SAMI approved cartridge, which is really neat. So it's commercially available. We're gonna have readily available brass, no more fire forming and all that stuff for all those wild cats. The 6PPC was never fully standardized by SAMI, so it's technically still a wild cat cartridge. This one, completely standardized. And it's also optimized for performance in the AR-15 platform, which is pretty neat. It shares the same bolt face as the 6.5 Grendel. Those bolts are readily available out there on the commercial market. The case head diameter, same as the Grendel, 0.441 inches. So that's pretty neat. And if you wanted to make the swap from, say, 5.56 NATO in your AR to the 6mm ARC, you just simply need to swap out your barrel, your gas system, make sure you have an appropriate gas system on there for the cartridge, and then you'd need a bolt and a magazine, and you're good to go. So all in all, fairly simple. Not quite as easy as a 300 blackout maybe, but simple enough. Now, it is a pretty neat cartridge. It has a 30 degree shoulder, which I find to be very desirable. And the performance, ballistically speaking, seems to be pretty impressive at the first look when I was going over the ballistic tables and charts. And I took a couple of my favorite loads and punched them in. And uh, the 6mm ARC was actually outperforming my 6.5 Creedmoor load. So that was kind of interesting and I was a little disappointed in my Creedmoor load. Maybe I need more development with that. But anyways, moving along here, it does have some interesting aspects to it when it comes to pressure. It is a standardized cartridge by SAMI, but there are two pressure maximums established. The first one is 52,000 PSI for gas guns because this cartridge is optimized for use in the AR-15. The maximum overall loaded length is 2.260 inches, so it feeds from the magazine nicely. And they wanted to keep pressure low, in my theory, is because it uses the 6.5 Grendel bolt. You don't really want to be pushing that up to 62,000 PSI like you do with the 5.56 NATO, because I've seen a lot of those bolts fail. There's simply less material on the bolt face compared to a 5.56 bolt because the case head is bigger. So I'm really glad that they lowered that pressure so you won't be wearing out your guns prematurely, you won't be breaking parts and that kind of thing. It gets pretty expensive when you start doing that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> it's, it's not good. But um, there is also a 62,000 PSI mark for the bolt action rifles, which I'm really happy about. And I should point out right now, that's what we'll be loading all of our cartridges to in this video, is 62,000 PSI. These won't be suitable for your gas gun. You're going to wear out parts prematurely, possibly break things. So be sure you cross-reference and check your data and pick the right data for whichever firearm you're going to be using. Also, on a side note, when it comes to that pressure, it's pretty neat for us hand loaders and it gets me excited because I'm really glad they established these two pressure maximums. The only other cartridge I can think of that is like that off the top of my head is a 4570 Government, which has three pressure maximums depending on what kind of firearm you're using. But all the factory ammo for six millimeter arc will be loaded obviously to 52,000 PSI maximum because you have gotta have ammo that works in both the gas gun and the bolt gun, which is really neat for us hand loaders because it means that we can only unlock the true potential of this cartridge through hand loading. You're not going to get factory ammo at 62,000 PSI. 
So that's kind of what we'll be doing today. And on that note, let's go ahead and take a closer look at our test rifle here. So for those of you familiar with Handloader Magazine, this rifle should look pretty familiar. Because our own writer, Patrick Mateen, did an article, an excellent article, on the 6mm arc. And he used this rifle, which featured on the cover of issue number 331 here, and a CMMG Endeavor to work up loads for this cartridge. And it's a great article, packed full of information, and I would highly encourage that you check it out. This is a Masterpiece Arms Matrix chassis rifle, and it's fully adjustable. So starting out at the back here, it's pretty amazing how much thought and effort went into building this rifle. It is fully adjustable with these wheels for length of pull, and your cheek piece here can go up and down with these knob, and it has a pad on there, which is super soft, and I can greatly appreciate it because with a little hair up here, this pad prevents it from ripping it off my face very nice feature there. It has six different grip options available for it and three different thumb shelves. So when you get behind the rifle, you can rest your thumb right there and squeeze the trigger. A very nice feature. It also has a Trigger Tech trigger in here, which on an average of five pulls on a Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge broke cleanly and very crisply at one pound 5.7 ounces. So very light, and it's, it is, it's a really nice trigger. Everybody in the office that's got behind this rifle and squeezed it off loved it. On that note, we have a uh, Masterpiece Arms or a Curtis Action, which features a 60-degree bolt throw. And it is, it is very smooth. Very nice. It has a pretty large bolt knob, so good for grabbing a hold of that. I like that. Another really interesting feature that I can't recall seeing on any other firearm that I've personally handled or have experience with is this magazine release here is adjustable. You can actually raise and lower this and adjust it so that you will feed your cartridges. If you're having feeding issues, you simply adjust this magazine release here and you can raise and lower where the magazine sits to faci facilitate easy feeding. A really neat feature. It also has a built-in bubble level here and on the barrel we have a little sticker here which tells you your barrel heat. That's really neat and as we go through our hand loads I'll try and remember to keep you guys in the loop on how hot the barrel actually is. Which speaking of which is a very heavy Masterpiece Arms barrel and it's a 1 in 7 twist 26 inches in length and it also has a really heavy MPA premium uh, muzzle brake. It's a 6.5 muzzle brake, but it still works just fine with the 6 millimeter. No issues there. And then lastly, to top it all off, we have this uh, Trigicon AccuPoint 5 to 20 by 50 scope. It has a parallax adjustment on the side, and it also has an illuminated green reticle. It tracks very reliably, and this is actually the same scope I had on my 300 blackout for that video. And all I did to, to mount this was pop it off that 300 blackout and pop it on here, and I zeroed it in two shots. And that's all thanks to the rings it's mounted on. These are Loopold QRW2 quick release rings. They are awesome. If you're going to be swapping any number of scopes, maybe you've got one really good scope and you want to use it on a few rifles, especially for working up loads like I'm doing, these rings are fantastic. I'm a big fan of those. So there you have it. That's pretty much this entire rifle. It's gone back and forth between me and Patrick Mateen, I think three or four times now. So I kind of have a pretty good feel for how it's going to shoot. And idea, oh, the rifle does weigh 17 pounds and 10 ounces with this optic on it. So it is a heavy rifle, but I do think it's ideal for our purposes, which is just testing loads and seeing which one's going to provide the most accuracy, the best standard deviation, all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's an accurate platform to test out a brand new cartridge in. So I think we'll be able to get a pretty good feel for the performance of the 6mm ARC. So on that note, let's go ahead and jump over to the hand loading side of things. So rather than walking you through each step of the reloading process individually and kind of making a long drawn out video, 
I would, I thought I'd refrain and I'd just tell you what I did to work up these loads for this rifle. So I went ahead and selected a Mighty Armory sizing die. This is my first time using these dies and my first experience with the company. And I have to say, I, I was pretty impressed with the performance of the die. What stands out the most to me about this die is it has a proprietary coating on the inside there and they're super hard. The, the Rockwell hardness on them is through the roof. I wanna say it's 62 or above. It might even be above 62. But if you take like a dental pick or something, a really sharp piece of metal and you try and scratch that coating, the inside of the die, it, you can't damage it, which means it's gonna last a really long time. And I would compare the smoothness of it to when we made the switch from steel pistol dies to carbide sizing dies. Now a lot of you probably have only ever used uh, carbide sizing dies for handgun cartridges, but there is a big difference between the steel and the carbide. And I would say that's, that's how this die feels. It's like making the jump from the steel die to the carbide die. It is super smooth. Just running a case up in here, I mean the amount of force required it's, it's nothing, it feels really nice. And it did a good job of sizing the brass to Sammy specifications, depending on how I had the die set up. I could also bump the shoulder relatively easily. The only little thing I did notice is my neck tension was a little bit lighter than I wanted to, right around a thousandth of an inch neck tension. So I did apply a slight roll crimp using a Hornady seating die, which is uh, the die I use to seat all of the bullets because I don't have the Mighty Armory seating die yet. So I went ahead, sized all my brass. I went ahead and primed it with either Federal 205 gold medal match primers, small rifle, or Remington 7.5 bench rest primers, small rifle primers. And it kind of depends on which powder I used. I really like those Remingtons for ball powder, and I like the Federal for extruded. And I did some experimentation beforehand before this video just to kind of get a feel for how this rifle was going to shoot. And I think we're going to get some pretty good groups. Lastly, all the powder was weighed on a RCBS Matchmaster scale and all charges were accurate to four hundredths of a grain. So we should get some pretty consistent results. I'm, I'm really excited. We got premium bullets here, which of course I topped off using the Hornady seating die here. That light roll crimp was applied to each cartridge individually as a separate step, which I think is important if you're looking for accuracy. So there you have it. That's what I did to develop these loads. Got some premium powders here. What do you say we go ahead and take my preloaded ammunition here and we'll hit the range. So as you can see, we're out on the range now and as usual, the target is downrange at 100 yards and we have an Ailer Model 35P chronograph set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities. And According to my Kestrel 5700 here, the temperature is 83 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity is 40.9%, and pressure is 25.30 in HG. And for our first load, we're just going to go ahead and start out with the ringer here. We're going to be using a Lever Evolution Powder, a 27.5 grain charge, with a 110 grain Hornady A-tip bullet. Remington 7.5 primers, Hornady cases, and our overall loaded length is 2.290 inches. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get a group right out the gate with these guys. Eyes and ears. So we got a little bit of a storm rolling in here, which is nice and cools things off nicely. The temperature's down to about 80 degrees, but according to the Kestrel, we're getting a little bit of wind, anywhere from five to 
probably seven miles an hour. Yeah, there's seven right there at about the five o'clock position. So I don't think it's enough to mess with our groups at all. For this next load, we're gonna be using CFE 223 powder, a 29 grain charge with 112 grain Barnes match burner bullet. Personally, I'm a big fan of these bullets. Hornady cases, Remington seven and a half primers, and an overall loaded length of 2.300 inches. This is a little bit long, but it fits in the magazine, no problem. All right, so as they say, the proof is on the paper. So let's put them on a the paper. And the temperature of the barrel is right around 94, 93 degrees. Here we go. So after a brief break, we went ahead and paused, let the storm roll on by, and now it's a new day and it's beautiful. It's about 83 degrees Fahrenheit, according to my Kestrel 5700 here. And the wind speed is very, very minimal at about zero miles an hour to one mile an hour. So very calm day. And for the next load, we're gonna go ahead and use IMR 8208 XBR. This is a 26.5 grain charge with 108 grain Burger Elite Hunter bullet. Federal GM 205 primers, we made the swap over to those. Hornady cases and an overall loaded length of 2.290 inches. All right, let's test it. So the next load I have for you is using H4895 powder, a 26.1 grain charge with a 95 grain burger VLD. Same Hornady cases, but we've swapped over to the Federal GM205M match grade primers, not Magnums, match grade. Overall loaded length is 2.290 inches. This has always been a favorite powder of mine, so let's go ahead and see if this rifle will eat it up. All right, we're moving on to Accurate 2230 powder, a 27 grain charge with a 90 grain Nosler Acubon bullet. Same Hornady cases, swap back over to Remington 7.5 primers for this load, and an overall loaded length of 2.270 inches. So, let's shoot them.
So we're back from the range now after a couple of days of filming and shooting and testing different loads. And what we have here for you is the best loads that we shot through this rifle. We put about 150 rounds through the rifle and uh, over 20 different loads through it. And we have the best ones here. If you want to see all of the loads, they will be available for viewing for free on LoadData.com. You can see the good, the bad, and the ugly. See the group size, the velocity, which powder we used, which bullet we used. The only thing you won't be able to see is the powder charge weight. We reserve that for subscribers. And it's really a great way to support what we're doing here at Wolf Publishing and, and Handloader TV is to subscribe to that Load Data website and get access to all the information. So on that note, let's go ahead and take a look at our first target. And this legitimately was our very first target. We had just set up and the first load of the day was using Lever Evolution Powder, a 27.5 grain charge with a uh, 110 grain Hornady A-tip bullet. And we got a group size of 0.76 inches with a flyer and without the flyer, 0.26 inches. And I do believe that the flyer was the cold bore shot. I'd have to go back and look at the footage. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you guys can check that out and see. So for the first load, first right out the gate with this rifle, I was super impressed with that. And we got a standard deviation of 10 and an extreme spread of 26. And pay careful attention to those numbers as we go through these loads. They are really consistent. The next load we tried, we swapped over to Hodgdon CFE 223 powder with a 112 grain Barnes match burner. We got a group size of 0 0.60 inches, a standard deviation of 10, and an extreme spread of 26. So super consistent results, and that tells me that the sizing die was doing a really good job. Maybe if I would have sorted the brass and kind of checked for uniformity a little bit better on the brass, we would have got even better results. But we're rolling right along, we swapped over to IMR 8208 XBR Powder, a personal favorite of mine, with a 108 grain Burger Elite Hunter. We got a standard deviation of 10 and an extreme spread of 27 and a group size of 0.86 inches. Now this might not be the, the smallest group we shot, you know, but across the entire charge weight spectrum with this powder, we got sub MOA uh, results consistently, constantly. In fact, across almost all the loads, we got sub-MOA. There's very few groups that were over an inch. And when they were, it was usually my fault because I pulled the shot or whatever. So the, rolling right along, we swapped to IMR, or I'm sorry, Hodgden H4895 powder, a 95 grain burger VLD, and we got a group size of 0.48 inches, which is pretty good in my book. And we got an outstanding standard deviation of three and an extreme spread of 10. One of my favorite powders, I've always had good results with this powder, especially in cartridges like the 6 r 22250 You know, it's really good powder, 223. I'm a big fan of it, and the results kind of speak for themselves there. The next load is using Accurate 2230 powder. This is a max charge, it's pretty hot using a 90 grain Nosler Acubon bullet, but we kind of wanted to see what kind of velocity we could get with this powder. So we pushed it a little bit and the group did open up to 0.82 inches, but still sub MOA. And I'm pretty happy with that. And we got a velocity of 2,900 feet per second average, which is uh, pretty screaming fast, I think, for this cartridge. And uh, it is a 26 inch barrel, but you'd be you'd have no problems getting 2,800 feet per second out of a 24 inch barrel with this combination. There is also some footage that we shot of one more target that I think you guys would like to see. The next load we have for you is using H4895 powder, a 25.7 grain charge with the 95 grain Burger VLD target bullet. Using Hornady cases, Federal GM 205M primers, and an overall loaded length of 2.290 inches. So, let's shoot them and group them. I see a fly in the target. 
Oh, he's right in that group. Think we can hit him? Guess not. So as you can see, if not for that darn fly that got the best of me, that would have been a pretty good group. The standard deviation and extreme spread was a little bit wild on that, and that's another reason why we didn't really show it. But I thought it was pretty funny, and you guys can all make fun of me now in the comments below about uh, rushing that shot trying to hit the fly and completely missing. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe you guys see those flies on there too, and it, it just drives me nuts. I've always wanted to hit one, and one of these days I'm going to. So I want to leave you guys with some final thoughts I had, personally speaking, about uh, starting out with the rifle. The rifle really impressed me. It is heavy, it's 18 pounds, and it, it's not something for everybody, for sure. But uh, for our purposes, it did really well. Just being a solid bench gun, able to fit multiple shooters. Me and Patrick both had no problems uh, shooting great groups out of this rifle. I do wish the footprint of this pad back here was a little bit bigger, but I mean, it's obviously it didn't affect my accuracy at all. So the rifle did really well, super happy with its performance. Um, yeah, as far as the cartridge goes, I think we got a really good feel overall for what the cartridge is capable of. Velocity-wise, accuracy-wise, uh, its sensitivity to changes in bullets, changes in charge weights, different powders. We got really consistent results across the board. And it was very impressive. And it's actually got me considering building my own 6mm ARC in the AR platform just to kind of see what it can do. But of course, don't take my word for it. We show the results as we get them. So do your own research, look and see for yourself and see if uh, the six millimeter arc or maybe this Masterpiece Arms is something you would like to add to your own collection. And as always, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. And if you like this video, let us know by giving us a thumbs up there on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, personal experience with these firearms or cartridges, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below, so be sure to leave me a comment. And until the next time, we'll see you later.